Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF qualified auditor doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I am again back with a very very interesting topic. What are the key 7 steps as per FMEA AIG video 1st edition? Well, to understand about uh, FMEA 7 steps, it's important to understand what exactly FMEA is all about. So as per FMEA 1st edition, the definition of FMEA is that it is a team oriented, systematic, qualitative and analytical method to identify, analyze and mitigate the technical risk related to the product and manufacturing process design. One very important thing to understand is that FMEA is before the event, not after the event. So whenever we are doing a manufacturing process design or a product design, tool design or tool manufacturing, we need to make FMA before and not after that. And one very important thing as per FMA first edition is that how to know that whether FMA is effective or not. So for that, uh, as per the manual, we must see that what is the present cost of quality and cost of poor quality. And then after we effectively implement FMA, then we see that whether there is any variation, any improvement that has happened in cost of quality and cost of poor quality or not. If that improvement is happening, then certainly we can say that yes, FMA is effective. If not, then whatever we are doing is more of eyewash and we need to look into it in more detail. So as I was saying that there are seven key steps as per FMEA first edition and those seven steps are first is planning and preparation the second one is structure analysis third is about failure analysis the function analysis the fourth is about failure analysis the fifth one is talking about the risk analysis the sixth one is talking about optimization and the seventh one is talking about result and documentation and if you look into this data table then you will find that step number one, two and three, they are primarily talking about system analysis. Step number four, five and six, they are talking about failure analysis and risk mitigation. And step number seven is talking about the risk communication. So let's start with step number one, that is about planning and preparation. So there are five key objectives as per step number one. And these objectives are the first objective is talking about the project identification and boundaries that we should know what is the customer requirement, what is the expectation of the customer, what customer is looking for with respect to the FMEA and what are the boundaries that we are talking about design FMEA, process FMEA, machine FMEA, what all it is. So all that is a part of that. Then there are five T's that if we take care then we can do an effective FMEA and those five T's are intent, timing, team, task and tools. Then point number three is talking about that what needs to be included and what needs to be excluded from the FMEA. We should be very clear before going ahead with the FMEA because once we are clear about it, then we can do a very good FMEA. And then before making FMEA, maybe there may be some lesson learned from the previous FMEAs or maybe there is a possibility that in the previous FMEA, which may be a generic FMEA or a boundary FMEA, there must be some basic knowledge that we can get so that when we make this particular FMA, things are a little bit more clear and effective. And once step number one is clear, it becomes a very good basis for step number two, that is structure analysis. So there are six key objectives which are specified in FMA handbook, which are talking about structure analysis. So the first one is talking about that it is talking about a, a facilitating a complete understanding about the product and process. That is what is the intent of structure analysis. Then it, it is talking about how we can identify and break down the product and process into different sequences and for that we use process flow chart, structure tree and boundary diagram. And it is also important that there should be a good communication and collaboration between customer and the organization. The next one is that when we are making structure analysis we need to identify each stage what is the, its interface and what is the element which is the process that which is the requirement at this moment. And once we do this thing clearly, then it becomes a very good input for the function analysis that is step number three. Unlike the previous version that is FMA fourth edition in structure analysis, this is one of the key change that rather than talking about the process step, they have bifurcated into three parts. And by bifurcating into three parts, the definition about the process becomes or the product becomes more easy and more clear about it. So if you see the center one is talking about the process step that is a focus element 
on the left hand side that is step number one they are that is talking about the process or the product item and on number three is talking about process work element that is a lower level one and once it is clear then we can go to step number three to give an example with respect to structure analysis before talking about function analysis when we talk about structure analysis here the intent is that let's assume this particular pen so we are talking primarily about that how is the fitment that will happen with this particular riffle with this top part how the alignment will happen with this bottom part how the alignment will happen with respect to the threading part how the alignment will happen with that cap so this is all part of the structure analysis but when we talk about step number three that is function analysis now here we talk about the function of it like what is the function of it what is the function of this particular refill that how it should work what color it should be what will be the life of this refill maybe one hour two hours ten hours or maybe one thousand hours so all that is talking about the function part so when we go deep into the function analysis so here there are six key objectives so the first objective is talking about that what product should be doing in the function analysis step from the technical perspective so we should not write anything generic but only the technical aspect we need to specify here and while doing that we need to take the support of p diagram which is a parameter diagram or the process flow chart depending upon design fme or process fme and then while we are taking the inputs from structure analysis that is step number two we can very well understand the function and its requirement very easily one very important requirement while talking about the function analysis is that we should ask this question what does the thing that we want to analyze do and once we ask this question rightly we can get the right answer and once we identify the function analysis clearly it becomes a very good and a clear basis for step number four that is a failure analysis just like the structure analysis here also this is a key difference that is coming up in uh, function analysis that instead of specifying only one line they are specifying into three parts the center part is talking about the focus element which is talking about the function and requirement the first one is talking about next higher level function and requirement and third number is talking about next low level function and the requirement of the characteristics and once we specify it in this way then we can define the function in much more clarity so here begins step number four that is about failure analysis again there are four key objectives here by which by understanding about it we can understand this thing more clearly broadly it is similar to what we have understood in fme fourth edition except some minor changes so the first objective is to make a failure change this is something new which was not there in the previous version when we talk about failure chain we are talking primarily about the three things failure mode failure cause and failure effect and it has been made very clear that failure effect is a result of failure mode as well as failure cause is a result of failure mode that's why if you see the diagram you will find that failure mode is in the center and when we talk about failure mode basically we are talking about what are the different ways or modes in which something might fail when we talk about failure effect that is fe primarily we are talking about the consequence of these failures and when we talk about failure cause we are talking about that why failure mode could occur we are talking with respect to that just like the previous things here also the involvement of customer and the supplier is very important so that we can understand the things more clearly from their perspective and when we are talking about the failure analysis we need to understand and identify all the possible failure with respect to step 2 that is about structure analysis and step 3 that is about function analysis now here comes step number 5 that is risk analysis and there are seven key steps or seven key objectives that are being specified in fme handbook with respect to that the first one is talking about how we can assign that what is the present rating or what can be the proposed rating with respect to severity occurrence and detection so here we also define the preventive controls or the detective controls that we are having at the moment with respect to that particular process or the product we also specify the ratings with respect to severity occurrence and detection when we talk about severity occurrence and detection primarily severity has a linkage with failure effect occurrence has a linkage with failure cause and detection has a link with failure cause or failure mode and just like the previous version in both in all three severity occurrence and detection the rating is from 1 to 10 
one new thing that is coming here is action priority now this action priority is although similar but different from rpn risk priority number so earlier we used to have a multiplication of severity occurrence and detection but unlike that now there is a different table wherein there are three different categories which have been made the first category is high priority then medium priority and the low priority and based on that then the actions are being taken and then we decide what needs to be done with respect to that and once we are done with that here comes step number 6 that is talking about the optimization so there are nine key different objectives that i'm going to share with respect to that the first one is that we identify what are the actions which are necessary to reduce the risk and how we can increase the customer satisfaction by improving the product and process design that is step number 1 then we also identify the responsibility and the target dates for the actions that we have proposed then we also define that what kind of documentation that needs to be done and then we implement that the next and very important thing is about the effectiveness monitoring that whatever actions that we have taken have we seen the effectiveness of that whether they are actually working or not working and once we do that then we review the rating of severity occurrence and detection in case there are changing then we change that another important thing is that when we are making this thing there should be a very good interaction between cross functional team supplier and the customer and only then we can do a good job we also need to take care that whatever actions that we are specifying here or proposing here they should be implementable and we also need to capture things gone wrong tgr for the future fma and then as we say that fma is a live document so we need to keep on reviewing and revising the fma during our mass production design change and the corrective action so that being step number 7 that is result documentation so if you see it actually it is not something different but basically is a culmination of step number 1 to step number 6 that how we have established step number 1 to step number 6 how we have recorded that and how we have communicated all the relevant industry parties including customer supplier and the organization that what action we have taken that's all with respect to the result documentation now let me talk about some of the key challenges that industry is facing with respect to fma the first and the foremost challenge is that even though this addition has come more than 2 years back how much the cft or the people who are making this new addition they are clear about the requirements from step number 1 to step number 7 then the second key challenge is that how often fma is actually a live document and whenever there is a customer complaint or rejection or any change in the processes or maybe any design change from the customer how often we are actually reviewing our fma and making changes in that and thirdly and the most important thing is how we are verifying that whether our fma is effective or it is just a piece of document that we are making maybe for the customer or for the auditor and that can only be seen if we know that whether cost of quality and cost of poor quality are improving or not and if it is improving then we can really say that it is actually benefiting the organization so these are the three key possible failures or you can say challenges that industry is facing at this moment and there can be many more So if I do a summary I talked about what is FME I talked about the seven steps about it then I talked in detail about all the seven steps and then finally I talk about the key challenges that industry is facing at this moment My next video will also be in line with the same series of FME and here I'll be talking about broadly what is the key difference between FME of first edition which is the new version and FME of fourth edition So that will be the next video Regularly I'm getting a lot of feedback from sir and they are helping me to understand your expectation so please do continue that and in case you want to understand about this video a little bit more in detail if you see you find a link below if you click that you'll find a blog there and once you click that you'll find this information in much much more detail and in case you are liking these kind of videos and blogs you can always share with your friends and colleagues and you can subscribe to my youtube channel and my website bhavyamangla.com thank you